Ibrahim. Eee. Babam bozucu oldu bir tane. Ana 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 bakana tuk. O bana da ni kuru zungu. Kasate. Mdu buku miye mune kachay. Luluta gulu kuke. Linzo kwa lwe kuke. Milo. Oko sasa gunchaka udiche yele yao. Jompa daye nyini. Yari kwa red ya? Red ya ya. The profile red. Standing by. Profile yoji enda ba. No it's okay as long as you see me by. Yes, yes. Take it, take it. Then numbers, the money was in your bar. Okay. We had a split standby, silence and set. Uh, mama. <coughs> mama. Banana mm. games when you walk to our name, Mukatono. But that is his life. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 again, they, they're bidding the name. No, you just go to the MTV Facebook page. You didn't even share the feed. No, no, no. I'm not even going to share the feed. Okay. 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 Perfectionist, you know? Yeah, I got to eat that. Well, um... A very good morning, uh, Romeo. I'm sure it's a beautiful morning from wherever you are. It's a beautiful morning. Great thanks and great thanks to the Almighty that you are all live and clear from wherever you are. I want to welcome you to this conversation. It's going to be a very great conversation today. We're live from Magere. Romeo, it was a very cold morning on my way here. It was quite chilly. But the beauty about it was one is that at the end of the day, I got here safe and sound. All those watching us live from the different walks of life, I want to thank you for being a part of this conversation. My name is Andrew Chamagero, and today's conversation, it's a conversation we had sometime in November, and we are back after the elections and all that. Today, in a is that Dracer, just last week, President rebuked a couple of things, the country's army, police for heavy hardness, and for the very first time in history, since he returned to office in January, following one of the most bloodiest election cycles in Uganda's recent history, the president, Museveni, also defended some of the violence made it out against uh, um, my next guest, and that is the National Unity Platform Party President, Robert Chagulanyi, uh, who is going to be with us this Saturday morning. Now, this conversation is going to answer a couple of questions you and I have had in the recent past. So kindly share this feed from the different walks of life, those on Facebook and those on YouTube. You're so much welcome to this morning. Good morning, Honorable Chagulani. Good morning, Andrew. It's Miracle. Normal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure having you. Good to have you again. It has been, I think, like, um, we're getting close to years since we last had a conversation. It has been very interesting. First of all, of all, you had the president's okay. speech and that's very important. They could not wait to hear you. You heard the president's mm. speech that was last week. Um, he, he said people like your party, the NEP, um, are trying to ignite the Kavaka party. I mean, what is it? What is this? Well, I'll get to the uh, Kavaka allegations later, mm. but like you said, many people couldn't wait. Yeah. Um, on the contrary, I couldn't believe, mm. and I'm sure many other people couldn't believe that this is the same Museveni mm. that was speaking. I mean, uh, while we know that he's such a hypocrite, while we know that he's a person who lies with a straight face and wide open eyes, but again, this one was taken no higher. I mean, this is Museveni who just in a short uh, a period before was... Uh, you know, uploading mm. uh, security uh, for beating me. He was uploading FD, uh, uh, SFC mm. for torturing me in Arua. He said they did it right. He <laughs> said they beat me very well. Mm. Now, this is the same person, mm. uh, again, speaking as if he's an opposition activist. 
condemning mm. the torture, the brutality that is made by his own forces. I mean, they do it on behalf of him. They beat mm. and murder Ugandans on behalf of him. Mm. And certainly, on, uh, I mean, on his orders. What do you mean when you say that he sounds like an opposition activist in one way or the other? Because he comes to say exactly what we have been saying for the longest time. We've been condemning the torture, the brutal torture, the, the murder, uh, extrajudicial murder of citizens. Mm. I mean, Museven himself came out and applauded uh, security for murdering uh, citizens, mm. you know, for pacifying the country by murdering citizens. Mm -hmm. And now he is here condemning it at the same time. Of mm. course, besides uh, the hypocrisy that he always represents, we are sure that he is saying this because the pressure is much. Museveni, the pressure see, from who? The pressure from the citizens of Uganda and the pressure from the international community. You saw just the other day his friend, Mar El Bashir, is going to be handed to the ICC, and you know we took Museveni to the ICC. Mm. So he knows what befalls dictators like himself. Mm. He is seeing in the near future. So he's trying to run away from that reality mm. and leave these others that he orders to do uh, those atrocities. I mean, this is characteristic of Museveni. You saw how we would use the Kaihura mm. to brutalize Ugandans, but when Kaihura was sanctioned by the uh, ICC, Museveni left him like but, that. But, but Honorable Chagulani, Museveni was on record uh, last week. He said that there is no party that has up upheld the human rights in this country, like the NRM party. And um, he was a la carte on that. He said, that, well, there are a few things that could go under the carpet, but the human rights, he says, that they have maintained it. What do you make of that? Well, I call it hypocrisy, I and mean, if hypocrisy was a person, that would be Museveni. I mean, this is a person who, under his command, his son, mm. is, is overseeing the brutal uh, arrest, kidnapped of people. Right now, as we speak, mm. citizens are being held against the law in military detention. James Mobiru, an elected councillor, is in matching their military detention for dressing the way I'm dressed. Mm. Many young people, I mean, People have been castrated, mm. eyes plucked out. Mm. Women have been raped. You know this. Everybody knows this. Mm. And Museveni has always been applauding people that have been doing this simply because they were keeping him in power. Now he sees it's going down south and he is kicking everybody else under the bus. And very soon mm. he will be picking these people and handing them to the ICC. But it is him that we are going after because mm. he is the chief priest of that brutality and he said that nup and um and the likes behave like terrorists want to bring kabaka yeka and Amin. what is your response to this because you're saying his hypocrisy doesn't respect the human rights and all but he says your party is behaving like a terrorist not online not offline you want to bring back the, the anarchy that came the, the amin regime and the separation of the Abakayika sect. Do we have the law in Uganda? Why doesn't the law work on us if we're behaving like terrorists? I mean, this is the same person whose security minister called us terrorists for speaking the truth. How come they have not, the law has not worked on us? Museveni mm. has always been trying to use tribal narratives whenever he has no argument, mm. you know? Why, why, what do you mean when in Kabaka Yaka? Because I'm in Uganda, you want me to apologize because I'm in Uganda? I certainly will not apologize for that. Mm. But again, that has been Museveni over time. Every time he has no argument, he does exactly that. You know, mm. Museveni is the only person that can be compared to I mean, In fact, even worse, he's doing what the Amin regime did times 10 or times, you know, more than 10. So um, he has no more authority to compare us to. Then, Honorable, one would say that maybe Museven has respect for the human rights, but maybe his other structures, the directives, are not adhered to by his people. What do you make of this? When he comes on the TV, on the media, national media, and says that, look, I've, I've, I've directed this and this, but it has not been done. This time I'm going to take charge. What do you make of that? Then let him be honest and say he is not in charge. He is either a hypocrite or he's not in charge, or both. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I mean, how do you say I've instructed uh, my forces 
to observe human rights mm. and then human rights are being abused under the watch of your son mm. he came on national tv and said the sfc which is under which was immediately under the command of his son yeah. is the one that has been carrying out these abductions mm. the abductions we mean people citizens being abducted mm. tortured some have missed not being seen again. Chibalama John Bosco, we've never seen him again. Our brothers from Kiseka, we've not seen them again. Mm. Those that have been lucky to resurface have shown up with missing eyes, with missing teeth, with the smashed uh, manhoods, women raped and all that. All this is being done under the watch of Museveni and Museveni's son and his close, you know, uh, Kakun. What do we make of that? <laughs> it is sanctioned by him mm. or he's not in charge? Oh, in, both, like I in said. November, at least 54 people, for the record, we shot dead by demonstrating your arrest in Mayugi district. In this admission and claim of indiscipline, part of the justice you've been calling for, and for those who lost their, their lives, do you believe that um, the more we keep agitating and rather ad advocating for them to be released or to, to resurface, it will be justice enough? Of course, justice delayed yeah. is justice denied mm. i mean many people even before the election mm -hmm. they've been abducted and like i said some have never shown up again some have shown up dead mm. and others have shown up severely tortured mm. we've been agitating for that and just the other day Museveni also comes out to agitate for the same mm. you are condemning the people that are under your supervision for criminality mm. why have they not been arrested Napoleon, uh, this uh, guy from military police, is on camera being journalists. How come none of them has been arrested? You know, you have seen even the BBC has documented the murder in cold blood of citizens, you know, on camera. How come no single person has been apprehended for that? It clearly shows that Museveni is just acting to the gallery. Like I said, he's under pressure from the international community. He wants to put up an act, which he certainly doesn't mean. It never says what he means. And, and then that brings me to my other question. Uh, Honorable Chaglani, you took President Museveni to the ICC. Why do you think the ICC would be a good place to resolve Ugandan matters? Doesn't that serve the narrative? Everyone, you know, a couple of people have heard that uh, you are pushing a foreign agenda. If, if, if you're taking him to the ICC, have we exhausted the options around the region? Have we exhausted the options around the, our, our, our own country? First of all, Andrew, I want to remind you that we are part of the international community. Yes, we signed the wrong We are part of the uh, UN. Mm. And secondly, uh, I will quote Museven himself. He took Joseph Kennedy to the ICC. Mm. Was he serving a foreign agenda? But most importantly, I'll tell you that the justice system here has more or less been untwisted. Okay. You have seen all the, uh, you know, matters that have, go have gone to court, mm. matters of uh, human rights. Since I was tortured in Arua, mm. nothing has been done. We have not gotten justice. And all other Ugandans here, mm. you know, even right now as we speak, a matter was taken to court challenging the trial of civilians uh, in a military court, which is illegal. Mm -hmm. That matter took years, the Kabazuburuka case, to be resolved. And even when it was resolved, you see that they are playing a delaying tactic while innocent young men and women are rotting in the military detentions. Like I said, mm -hmm. an example is Wizi and James Mobiru, a, a, a councillor who mm -hmm. was elected, is being kept in marching gear torture chambers. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they want to intimidate people. So there's no rule of law here. And when it does not work here, we take it internationally. So and most importantly, mm. I want you to know mm. that Museveni feeds off the uh, international community. How? By borrowing money which you and your children and your children's children are going to pay. The same money that is being used to keep us as slaves. And that is why we try to control him also from there. Mm. Because that is where he gets the support. So when you go international, you're blocking his feeds of funds. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yesterday, um, rather, when he was addressing the nation, there is something he actually I like to do. He said Kaida was ideologically bankrupt. Do you believe with that statement? Shame. Shame <laughs> as, a, as a person who shares uh, 
relation with uh, the late Andrew uh, uh, mm. Utakome Kaira, mm. I feel offended. But again, as freedom fighters, all freedom fighters, you know, mm. I'm sure they are equally offended to see that Museveni disrespects Dr. Andrew Utakome Kaira, a doctor of criminology, mm. for being ideologically bankrupt. Mm. It's only that Museveni has been a con man all his life. He conned the people, and even people who fought with him. I'll remind you that Museveni hid one time in my grandfather's house. In your grandfather's yes, house? Yes, uh, the late Joseph Warakira. He knows it. Mm. He knows what I'm talking about. So Museveni has been this kind of person that comes out to brag, that comes out to speak because he cannot be answered. But history is known. Mm. Okay? Mm. Museveni did not capture the Greater Buganda, the whole of. Uh, Chagwe was captured by Kaira and mm. the Freedom, Uganda Freedom Movement mm. and all these other, uh, you know, freedom fighters that joined him and supported him and worked with him. What happened to Kaira? He was arrested because Museveni feared competition and taken uh, and charged with treason. But later, released in 1987 because there was no uh, crime against him. This same hypocritical Museveni that says he does not murder um, political opponents cannot tell the people who killed Kaira. Mm. Okay, Kaira was arrested by Museveni, taken to Luzira, but because they could not contain him and they could not challenge him legally, mm. he was killed in cold blood. He was murdered in the same year in March in the no, So Museveni sorry. cannot explain this. He should be ashamed of himself. He should know that all history is quoted. He is not the master of history. He has written books and his own books contradict him. Go read his mustard seed. Go read uh, What's Africa's Problem. Go read Pecos Kutesa book. Go read, I mean, all the documentation will put him to shame. Mm. So he should be ashamed to, to disrespect the memory of Andrew Utakome Kaira because that memory is still fresh in many people of Uganda. Well, now, during political season, um, we have just had that conversation just to tap a little bit of what the Honorable has been paying attention to. Those who are joining us live, uh, we're live on the different platforms, and I want to thank you. Um, let's keep the tweets a little bit, you know, civil and sen. I understand it's a, it's a critical morning, but let, let's take out. Honorable, during the political season, your name came up on a daily. This is the first interview we are actually doing uh, since... Um, this is the first interview you're doing uh, since um, the political election ended. What have you been up to? Quite a lot. Like? But I'll say, generally, I've been about removing the dictatorship of Museveni. That's what I'm preoccupied with, and that is what every Ugandan should mm. be preoccupied with, reading our nation of the Museveni pandemic. Mm. So that's, that's what you've been running up to. I, I I am a little bit touched when you when you talked about Kaira. I yeah. I could see the energy. You feel yeah. that people who have shedded their blood for this motherland have not been rewarded with the justice and fairness of this country. Yeah. So, given that you say that the president of this country and the powers that be they have not paid what should be given to the Ugandans who sacrifice for the country, then what could be the solution? How best do we move from here as a country? The solution is being honest. Being honest, being true to your word. That is what we are told as African men. Be true to your word. As simple as that. Mm. Museveni should remember that Chikunyu meeting that they had with Kaira. Mm. What they discussed. He should remember, I mean, uh, Zain Aduli has always reminded him. Mm. You know, when Museveni reached out to Kabaka Motebi in that meet to call him to uh, uh, you know, convince him to have people support him. What was the understanding? The understanding among others was human rights, was decency, was democracy. That is what we struggled for. But again, like I said, Museveni is one person that will say a word and shamelessly go against it. This is the same person that wrote in his first book that Africa's problem are the leaders that overstay in power. He has been in power for 36 years and does not want anybody to remind him of what he said. This is the same person that said he would never be president beyond the age of 75. Hmm. <laughs> okay. But then the, so, it brings me to the question, Honorable. Is it the Ugandans, we the people, are we gullible enough that we don't see this? What have we missed as a country? Because, like you said, he's a very cunning man. Haven't we woken up our eyes and sight to see the cunningness that comes with it? 
Well, I'll borrow the words of Dr. Tabesi J uh, when he was on TV recently, mm. and I want to agree with him. He said that uh, when somebody oppresses you mm. over time, one year, two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 35 years, 36 and counting, then while you look at the uh, your oppressor, you should also look in yourself as and know person. that sometimes it <clears throat> might be your stupidity. Mm -hmm. And somebody quoted, and I also agree, mm -hmm. that when God is punishing at the end of the day, he will punish those that oppressed people. Mm -hmm. But he will also punish those oppressed people even much more for <laughs> allowing this person <laughs> God is to going oppress to punish us. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we probably also have a problem. Mm -hmm. How come I'm the only one who is talking about this? I'm sure the journalists have been affected. Mm -hmm. The business people have been affected. The artists have been affected. The doctors have been affected. The lawyers, everybody has been affected by the Museveni misrule. Mm. How come only a handful of people talk about this? This should be the business of every Ugandan if this nation matters to you. Mm. Just this morning, and by the way, I want to also grab this opportunity mm. to congratulate my good friend, Dr. Ishilema, uh, HH. In, uh, <gasps> Have you seen the fire in that country? Well, the well Zambia has done it. They've shown us. But we, this is something we should have done long time ago. Mm -hmm. Lungu tried to arm twist uh, the voice of the Zambian people. The cameras but were he watching. Couldn't. The cameras were watching. Mm -hmm. Cameras were watching all the time. Did you even Uganda. sleep? You're following this. Of course I'm following this uh, so much. And I'm sure everybody else is following. Um, so like I was saying, Andrew, that we probably also have a problem. Mm. You know? Mm. Today, this our struggle has been mainly a common man's struggle. The, the, the barbers, mm. the border border riders, mm. the, the DJs, the musicians, but everybody should be equally involved in this. It's unfortunate that Museveni is using the oppressed people of Uganda to oppress them even further. And mm. we must turn this around if we must now, free ourselves. Now, Honorable, um, you, you really had a very great quote. I really want to thank you. The feedback online here, the questions keep coming through, but I'll stick to... <laughs> what we actually have here you proved your clout in the in the recent elections around the buganda region the central region um with a resounding win how do you intend to sell the brand and the ideology of nup beyond the central because central and some parts of east went red i'll tell you this my brother mm. that is a wrong narrative that's a very misleading narrative mm. trying to paint a picture that uh, change is only desired in the in center. Central, yes. That is wrong. Okay. You saw what happened in Arua when you were there. Yes. You saw what happened in all of northern Uganda. You saw what happened in western Uganda in Chiruhura. <laughs> the military had to beat people mm. so that they don't, in quote unquote, ashamed General Museveni for showing support for change. From where okay? it comes from. So this is everywhere, not only here mm. in the central, everywhere well, in Uganda. And I'll tell you uh -huh. that just like we told you that largely Western Uganda did not vote mm. because they did not allow them. The whole of Northern Uganda, they did not allow people to go to the polls. Okay? Mm. Internet was switched off. Electricity was switched off mm. in order to push this narrative. Museveni is pushing, pushing the central mm. narrative so that he can put that tag, that tribal tag. So it is Museveni's call is saying that you're building a Uganda party. That is nonsense. That is nonsense. They are trying to make me feel sorry about who I am. And I will never feel sorry for who I am. I, I am that. proud and every Ugandan <laughs> should be proud of who they are. Okay? <clears throat> and you should also be ashamed because Museveni has been largely supported by mm. people in the central. Mm. Why wasn't it a central affair when he was getting all these, uh, these votes here? You okay, know? Honorable. NP, um, Going back to the party beat, do you at any one time regret having stood for presidency? Or after standing for the presidency, what big lessons did you learn? I I, I followed some of the trail. There were some trails I didn't follow, but I saw some recordings that don't make to the media eye. Yeah. Um, they're gross. I condemn them in the strongest terms possible. But do you regret going on that journey? Of course I don't regret. And if I had to do it all over again, mm. I'll do exactly that, even more radically and more aggressively. Okay. Because I believe that what we were doing and what we continue to do is the right thing to do.
so I don't have any regrets. There was a lot of criticism when your family actually was evacuated, I think, shortly after after the election, I think we, we, we were heading there. Um, a lot of criticism came up through uh, just before the election in anticipation. Some supporters felt betrayed. What was the logic behind this? Somebody feels betrayed when I what, what you took when I family. take my family out of danger. Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I would do that any time. Mm. I would, uh, you know, evacuate my family any time they are in danger. And that's what anybody should do when they can afford it. Mm. Yeah. NUP is the strongest political party in the 11th parliament, but also it is the youngest political party in parliament. How ready is the party handling the opposition allies? How are you holding the allies there? Um, starters, we are not only intending to play opposition politics uh -huh. because we are not the opposition. We are the option. Okay. So. <laughs> bring it again. Bring it. I, I like that. I like that. You are yeah. not the what? No, we are not the opposition. We are the option. Nice. We are only um, twisted into that position. And like we said, we shall use every platform mm. to push for the agenda of change. Mm. Of course, we are in touch with all um, like-minded people. And I must tell you that even within the regime, they are those uh, people that are not as outspoken as we are, that agitate for change mm. silently, that are supporting us, that are with us, and they continue to, you know, to build synergies. Mm. But even within the uh, forces, the open forces of change, which you like to call the opposition, mm. we are pushing for, you know, uh, cohesion, mm. because we, we've said this right from the beginning, that nobody can do this alone to uproot a dictatorship we must work together. And let us look at the examples. Malawi served as an example. Unfortunately, we didn't keep to it. Now we have an example of Zambia mm. that just uprooted uh, a propping dictator. Lungu had uh, started picking terrible lessons from Museven. And I'm very glad that the people of Zambia uh, prevailed. And I'm sure the people of Uganda and all people of Africa will uh, take heed of that. Exam. Okay. Your opponent insists that your party is already doing deals in government, but is this a way to grow strength as a party? What do you mean? Can you the, that the, the, there is one in the corridors of power that some people within the NUP are sealing deals with the party, meaning with the, with the government. What do you make of this? Well, I would say that... Uh, just like every other dictatorship, they will try as much as possible. If they cannot coerce, then they will convince. And if they cannot convince, then they will do otherwise. They use carrot and stick. Oh, yeah. And those weak-minded people will certainly create the struggle, you know. Yeah. And uh, like we've always been saying, we are going to see everybody by their deeds. Of course, just like uh, some people in the regime are reaching out to us uh, silently and telling us, friends, we are with you, although we cannot speak out because of fear of this and that. Mm. There's a possibility that the regime is reaching out to some of our rank and file. Okay. But like I've just said, we will see them by their deeds. And in any case, that these people are not accountable to me as an individual. They are accountable to the people of Uganda who elected them. And they elected them to those offices with certain expectations. Mm -hmm. So the people of Uganda, like I've always been reminding those politicians, mm -hmm. are their bosses to, them, to whom they are accountable. Okay. Now, NUP um, is not yet a member to the IPOP. And um, I really want to tap your thoughts about this matter. Are you... Um, as saying that just rejecting the opportunities iPod presents or you come off with a narrative like we know what you're doing and we're watching you from that far or we have learned how unfair the platform is and we won't come into it well we have our own reservations mm -hmm. about iPod and I will tell you that uh, from what we read of iPod now is more or less uh, a legitimizing tool of the regime we believe in dialogue but like mandela told us it's free people the dialogue not uh, putting your boot on my neck and you say let's talk mm. so there's no sense really us being in uh, an institution uh, aimed at dialogue 
when the regime is doing what it's doing, when we cannot be allowed to uh, have our political activities, legal political activities, where we cannot be allowed to build our legal structures, where our leaders are under illegal incarceration, where our paraphernalia is illegally criminalized and so on and so forth. Mm. So when that is still the case, then you don't expect us to be part of that iPod because it doesn't make sense to us wow. in any way. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That makes a lot of you. You've changed the entire perspective I was looking at you. It is a yardstick to justify the current. Certainly. Okay, now in relation to international relations, let's just get to the cross border. You've had the parademonium between Uganda and Kenya sparked by William Ruto the other day. Yeah. He was denied to come here, um, which is the first in the region we've had since 2019. So international relations with our regional neighbor has been sinking deeper and deeper. Rwanda, March 2019, Kenya 2020, over subsidized exports. How can we deal with this to, to, to mend the fence? Because you can't hate the neighbor in the south, Rwanda. And again, you have a problem with, with with Kenya, again, how best can we talk about this one? Well, I'll tell you that Museveni and his modus operandi mm. is a disaster, mm -hmm. not only to Uganda, but even to our neighbors. I mean, many of uh, Uganda, especially the males, mm. had a good relationship with, with Rwanda. Rwanda. <laughs> See <laughs> what Museveni did. <laughs> <laughs> but coming to Kenya, yeah. um, of course, the people of Kenya are the ones that have the right mm. to determine who leads them. Mm. And I encourage them to use that right, to use that mandate to decide who governs them. Mm. You know, as brothers, uh, you know that the people of Uganda and people of Kenya have always looked out for each other. Yeah. When we were suffering with uh, the dictatorship, of Idi Amin, many uh, refugees were housed in Kenya, and we don't take that for granted. Mm. Even during the, 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 the Obote times, many Ugandans fled to Kenya. And in 2007, mm. when there was political post uh, uh, election violence, yeah. Uganda returned the favor. Mm. I mean, when I was incarcerated in Kenya, mm. I mean, in, 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 I saw in, talk in Nairobi, in, in, in Buru, and, uh, and Arua, mm -hmm. you saw the people of Kenya standing up for us. So the people of Uganda and the people of Kenya are joined in a, um, a, in a moral you know, fabric that cannot be broken. Mm -hmm. However, like I said, it's the people of Kenya to decide mm -hmm. who rules over them. I can only say mm -hmm. that uh, the people of Kenya have seen what kind of disaster Museveni and Musevenism has been. So there's uh, I, I would really, really, really well, encourage. Well, pull the tune. Museven and Museven is exactly. Museven is 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 is, is, is a character. Museven is in, then becomes a routine or a trait. Yeah, you're throwing it to Kenya. Yes, I'm. No, I'm telling uh, the people of Kenya mm. and the leaders of Kenya mm. that there's no good example to pick from Museven. You know, you want a leader that is going to. I mean, uh, what kind of lesson is, uh, moral lesson is Museveni going to give to leaders of Kenya? Mm -hmm. um, what are we exporting? Exporting the injustice? Exporting murder? Exporting torture? Exporting democracy? Exporting dictatorship? What do we want to export to Kenya? So I would uh, encourage the people of, Uga of Kenya to avoid Museveni, to stay as far as possible from Museveni and Museveniism. Um, Let's, um, when you talk about justice, I'm looking about the people who lost their lives during elections. Some of them, um, there was one I saw you around the roundabout of this ago when you're coming back from Masaka, yeah. I think. Um, the ones who lost their lives during the election, how best could they be compensated for their families? Well, we, first of all, we are not after compensation. Mm -hmm. We don't want people to be killed. We don't want you to kill our children. And then you pay us, like Museveni was saying. Mm. They murder people uh, wantonly on the streets, and he says you are going to pay them. How much money are you going to pay the family of Frank for killing their son? Mm. How much money are you going to pay the children for taking away their father, their breadwinner? How much money are you going to pay for the parents for killing their children? So we just don't want our children to be killed 
like I said, around Sega, that was Frank mm. Senteza, who was murdered by military police under the command of one Napoleon. And all this was on camera. Museveni is pretending not to know that. What a kind, why, what a hypocrite. Let's, 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 let's go still back in, in the diaspora. Many Ugandans have suffered, um, and we don't have, should I call it, strong function of embassies in, in the diaspora. In, 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 we only have a pact with Georgia as a country. But then we have Kuwait, we have Abu Dhabi, and all those. You've had these people in the Biyumbas suffering. How best can a nation navigate this? I've seen it with my eyes. I've seen Ugandans being traded, being sold, like the 18th and 19th Slavery. century slave trade. I've seen that. Mm. It happens mm -hmm. as we speak. Every day at Entebbe Airport, mm. girls as young as 13 are being put on the plane. Mm to go and, uh, and, 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 and serve as maids. But you know, lots of abuse, lots of uh, torture and dehumanization have been ongoing. Our embassies have been reduced to playing politics and to spy on Ugandans <coughs> that are expressing themselves, especially on social media. That when, explains when, why. When, when, when you come to Ugandans yes, expressing yes. themselves on social media and being spied on, now oh, that brings me to the issue of Lumbuye. Yes. Um, who should I say is a fanatic of, 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 of you? Not uh, a fanatic mm. of me. Mm. He speaks the truth. Although, of course, I'll tell you yeah. that uh, sometimes mm. some Ugandans um, express the themselves mm. in a way that I may uh, slightly disagree with. Mm. But like one writer said, I disapprove of what you speak, but I will defend with my life mm. your right to say it. When Stella Nyanzi was expressing herself, mm. although sometimes we didn't uh, agree with the language that she was using, she had all her right and we stood with her mm. and supported her. When Frank Ashumba was expressing himself, sometimes I disagreed with his direct attack yes. on uh, the Boganda institution, yeah. but he had the right to express himself. Mm. Similarly, Fred Kajubirumbi mm. has a right to express himself mm. and he has a right to safety. Many Ugandans mm. feel safe criticizing the Museveni dictatorship mm. from a safe distance because they know what happens to people that speak the truth here. But Honorable Many Chab of them are killed. Honorable Chabran, this is a guy who is advocating for a genocide against fellow Ugandans, announcing our king dead, insulting the Buganda institution, like you're saying. Yes, we have a right and freedom of expression, but to what limits do we have to go? Well, as an individual, mm. I've not seen, and I'll be very glad when, if you uh, provide evidence to the fact that he announced our king dead, mm. or to uh, a, a fact that uh, he uh, announced uh, that, that he called for violence, for, for, for genocide, I have personally not seen that evidence. I'll be glad if you showed that to me. Mm. But I have seen some people that have been uh, with members of parliament and have been openly advocating for the continued murder of Ugandans. You remember on the 18th and 19th mm. of uh, November last year, one blogger came out openly mm. bragging, we are the national resistance movement and we shall kill all of you. And even he called for the murder of my own friend. I've not seen the person lives in Uganda. I've not seen them being apprehended. So these are the double standards and hypocrisy that mm. we talk about. But anyway, like I was saying, everybody has a right to express themselves and if anyone has a problem with them we have uh, national law and we have international law and no crimes especially internationally can go unchallenged of course two wrongs don't make it right and uh, those ones just joining this conversation we are live from magire here in chadondo and we are with honorable robert chagulanyi the nup national unity platform party president and we're looking at a couple of things honorable what's your thought about how covid 19 was handled the first wave the second wave the execution the implementation the fans the what fans, of it? The, fans. <laughs> uh, the covid pandemic was in the first place politicized uh, to the benefit of the regime and utterly mismanaged um, do you remember mm. that fighting the COVID-19 pandemic is fighting a disease? Mm. It's only in Uganda that we are fighting a disease by, you know, empowering the military and the police. We fight the disease 
with guns. When I was still in parliament, billions of money, dollars, were borrowed. And like I've always been saying, you, your children, and your children's children are going to pay that money. The mismanagement, you've seen it according to the parliamentary report and the Auditor General's report, although the culprits are only elevated, you know, they are not punished. But the corruption messed it up completely. Uh, it was politicized to help Museveni keep in power, to hound the, the, the opposition, uh, blocking communication, blocking uh, campaigns, while everywhere else, uh, everything else uh, goes on like before. Today, as we speak, or even in the recent past, in the first lockdown, nothing was was being observed like an SOP. It was largely politicized. Mm. You saw the passing, the constant passing of uh, soldiers and police officers, not doctors and medics. Mm. While the um, medical schools were closed, the military and police schools were open. Mm. That is how the Museveni regime handled the, handled the pandemic. And that explains why it went out of hand and continues to go out of hand. Some NRM bloggers <clears throat> online, they say that uh, your campaigns were the super spreader of the pandemic. That as soon as you were done with, um, with the campaigns and all, numbers started to surge. Well, allow me to remind you mm. that the first rally mm. and the first procession mm. were done by the Minister of Health herself. General Pacheco, you know. <laughs> now, what kind of hypocrisy is Super that? Spreader. You know, mm. while churches were closed <clears throat> to worshippers, mm. they were actually open to NRM campaigns. Mm. What do you make of that? Allow me to remind you that the NRM carried out its primaries by lining up on the back amid the pandemic, the height of the pandemic. <clears throat> what do you make of that? So these people, they even forget what they said yesterday or what they did yesterday. Mm. It's just a bunch of irresponsible people. Let's talk about the places of worship. Um, there is some gentleman who sued government for keeping the mosques, churches, whatever places of worship being closed during the pandemic. Well, actually, um, as a leader who, I like the word you say, we are the option. Yeah. How best can we navigate this society? Should we open these places of worship? I'll tell you that uh, it all begins with honesty and responsibility. We should first of all agree mm. that the COVID-19 pandemic is here with us mm. and it probably is not going to go away tomorrow. Mm. How do we go about this in a moral way, in a decent way, but in a practical and realistic way? If we are to maintain this hypocrisy of the Museveni regime, mm. then we are going to go around in circles. We are going to lie to each other. We are going to block our, our places of worship while uh, people are converging in other places. I'll tell you that the lockdown is largely where the media sees. Mm. Go outside Kampala. You know, it's, as, it's business as usual. Sure. So what are we doing really? And that brings me to schools. Should we use the same approach when it gets to schools? Certainly, certainly. I mean, <clears throat> other countries have opened up schools. Yeah. The schools have been closed more or less for two years two now. Years. For how long is this going to go on? Look, at I was uh, talking to my wife the other day because she runs an NGO that largely focuses on uh, uplifting the girl child, the, child the caring arts with Anna <clears throat> and we were in uh, uh, Ruero the other day with Ruero Triangle MPs. Mm. We were looking at the statistics by UNICEF. 22.5% rise in child pregnancy and uh, it's largely, uh, you know, linked mm. to the lockdown. Mm. Now, what kind of mothers are we going to have? What kind of generation are we building? So it is important that we put the funds and the facilities and the logistics that we have to what function. Mm. If we don't, if we have a, 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 a government that does not only focus on keeping itself in power and silencing critical voices, but serving the people, then we would have certainly come up with a solution to ensure that we keep our children uh, in school, but observing necessary SOPs that are not only to silence people, but to benefit 
the 190. That makes a lot of sense. When talking about that brings me, just last month, the Prime Minister, um, Honorable Nabanja, was very furious. I'm sure you must have seen this on media. She was, she was very furious about the relief that was sent to Kasese. She was like, this is such standard. This is below the belt. And she has, you know, flipped tables in there. And uh, this fishmonger, like some people want to call her, seems to be she, like she's shocked with what she's seen. What do you make of all this? Uh, for Nabanja to say she's shocked is hypocrisy. Again? She was in parliament with us <laughs> when we were looking at the beans that they were serving people. Really? In the, in the, in the previous, in the in first lockdown. Mm. You know? She must have seen the, the, the because she was not prime minister then, mm. but she certainly saw the food, the substandard food that mm. was being served to our people. And that has been the case. Mm. You've seen the, 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 not only the amount or the, the number of masks, but also the quality. Mm. If you have a poor quality government, it is only going to give poor quality services. <laughs> you understand? So Nabanja should not pretend to, 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 to be shocked. It shouldn't shock her. That is their modus operandi. That is what they do. That is NRM and Museveni. That is how rotten they are. Mm. And they should come to terms with that reality. And then that brings me to the question. What do you have to say about the fishmonger cabinet? What do you want me to say about Because he said he's using people you're not used to. He's using people with a rare gene of dynamic at play that you don't usually see these faces, uh, led by Nabang, of course. Well, we see these faces, I'll tell you. Mm. And I'll tell you that this is an illegitimate government. Okay? I'll tell you that Museveni is an illegitimate president. The guy you are talking to right now mm. is supposed to be the president of Uganda because mm. he is the people, he is the one the people elected. Mm. But because Museveni, by the barrel of the gun, forced himself to the people, he's trying to change the narrative to divert every here and there. Mm. And that's why he keeps, you know, uh, making all stunts. But I'll also remind you mm. that even the people in office, <coughs> these are only office bearers. They don't have the power. How else would uh, uh, the prime minister of a country come and claim that she's being <laughs> intimidated? You know? Mafias. Yeah, mafias. Mm. You know, everybody has been talking about mafias. Who are the mafias? Mm. I mean, ask the chief mafia himself. <laughs> 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 Honorable, yeah. let's, let's look at um, the way forward as a country. NUP 2022. We just have a few more years to the next election. The, 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 the government, I'm sure it's already having its strategy. What is there for the NUP? What are the plans like? If someone is out and supports the NUP and they want to know how best can they plan to get the call to action. Uh, for starters, hmm. it's important for our people, all our people, to know that we are being held at one point. It's very, very important for us to know that. Uh, you saw that people went to the polls, but their voice was suffocated. That is the status quo. That is where we are. And it, we, we shouldn't wait for 2026, 2024, not even 2022. Mm -hmm. Do what you can whenever you can do it. Wow. Yeah. That is how, I mean, that's how dictators are overpowered. You saw Bashir. It was just about a year or thereabout after he announced himself having won with uh, over 80 percent of the electoral of the vote, but he was removed by the people. That's how uh, the Mugabe's, the Gaddafi's, the Blaise Kampuaris of this world have been removed, and that is the same way that Museveni is. Museveni is not a democratic leader, so don't even deceive yourself that okay. It's politics as usual. We are, have come out of an election and we are going into another election. No, that is not the case. Okay. Our strategy mm -hmm. has always been uh, taking on the Museveni regime, both locally and internationally. And like I've briefed you internationally, we are trying as much as possible to make it clear to the international community, mm -hmm. which is responsible for keeping Museveni in power. You see Museveni... So do you mean a, when, when we vote it doesn't count? Someone sits out there in the void and decides for Ugandans in the international forums? No, no, no. I am telling you mm -hmm. that our vote doesn't count because the rebels that took over our country by force mm. in 1986 
are still behaving in the same way. They are still the same people that deceive us, put on a democratic face, but when it suits them, pull out the gun and muzzle the voices of the Ugandans. However, the international community is equally responsible because the United States of America gives almost a billion shillings every year to the Museveni regime, to the Museveni military, which Museveni military is responsible for killing Ugandans, for murdering, raping people, and keeping the democratic voices suppressed. The same to the, uh, the European Union, the same to all these other donors. So it, was it is our responsibility to go unto them. We saw Ugandans recently uh, demonstrating against the IMF uh, money that they were giving to Uganda. Why do you support an illegitimate regime? Why do you keep spoon, uh, giving money to this regime? Which money is being used? against the people. But you see, Honorable, you're saying it's an illegitimate government. Yeah. You went to courts of law and um, you lost trust in the courts of law and the courts of law announced. Just a minute. When you say you don't trust the courts of law, mm. what do, does that make them legitimate or illegitimate? Well, um, it depends on the context. <clears throat> yeah, but whatever context it depends on. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, when you go to the Supreme Court mm. and the Chief Justice is clearly biased and is clearly behaving in, uh, 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 in an illegal manner. Mm -hmm. And you saw that Justice Kisachi also came out. Mm. These were not my words. These words were also echoed by another judge National of television. the same <clears throat> Supreme Court. Mm. You saw all that mess. You know, let us pretend not to have seen that. So mm. having seen all that, Am I still wrong to say the process is illegitimate? Mm. Because, we, I mean, uh, the, the, the law was abused mm. by the officers of the law themselves. Mm. Wow. That's why I continue to say the Museveni <clears throat> regime is illegitimate. I'm talking the legitimate. Ladies. You're talking definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Great conversation. Um, we have been in the lockdown for 42 days. Um, at least I was lucky. Uh, my job allows me to, you know, fly and come out and talk to a couple of people. Ugandans have been in the lockdown. The economy is bad. Yeah. The economy is bad. Um, as a leader, how best can we revamp our economy to bounce back? For starters, I want to sympathize mm. with our people that have been deliberately <coughs> impoverished. And most importantly, the common people, I mean, border borders, etc., you see, this is a kind of regime that believes that you cannot rule over prosperous people. Mm. You can only rule over poor people. Mm. Explains why it's the lockdown that is being used to uh, chase people off their land. It's a lockdown that is being used to coerce taxi operators out of town and even to lock border borders out of town. Mm. So we are standing with them. And even when the regime pretends to reach out to them, certainly the corruption doesn't allow it. For starters, you cannot claim that you're reaching out to half a million people out of 44 million people. Mm -hmm. And also, even those half a million that they claim to reach out to, and they are not reaching out to them. Some have not received. You know, <coughs> you know how the Museven regime operates. Mm -hmm. Corruption is their, is their middle name. For starters, everything begins with the governance. When there's no governance, I can guarantee you that the economy will continue sinking down. Let's take examples of uh, Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. When there's misgovernance, when there's corruption, uh, the government is not going to function mm -hmm. to the benefit of the people. So what's the way forward um, with, with all these, the chaos in the education governance. sector, in the government, in the economy? How best can we look forward to a new hope as, as Ugandans? Well, some writers say it all rises and falls with leadership, you know. So for as long as the main agenda of those that rule over us is to stay in power, everything is going to be secondary, you know. We are going to be amidst a pandemic, but all the budget is not going to go to the health sector. Mm. It is going to go to security. Mm. We are going to have an education crisis, but the budget and minds of those that, do, that rule over us are not going to go to finding solutions on how best we can fix our education and how best we can save our children. No, it is going to go on how best 
to you know to, to on our base to keep themselves in power and that is why the focus has always been um i mean empowering security you'll find ldus you'll find the police officers and, and military focusing not at uh not at uh you know ensuring people have face masks or ensuring this vaccination but ensuring that people are kept in their homes it all begins and ends with the leadership we need for starters to get rid of rulers and i'm deliberate about calling them rulers and not the choice of what yeah we rulers. must be able to get uh, rid of rulers and get leaders and get people whose sole aim is to find solutions for the population and not to themselves. Before we do that, mm -hmm. we are going to be going in circles. Museveni and his regime do not care whether you live or die. No, they don't. All they care about is staying in power and continuing to uh, loot our country and impoverish the people of Uganda. Well, this brings me to the very last one. We always save for the best for the last, yeah? <clears throat> what do you make of uh, Kabaka's speech? I have never had you sound. And I saw you picked a couple of, you know, um, the tech on the speech. What do you make of this speech? Well, I'll say Sabasaja Kabaka was spot on. He spoke his mind, and I believe the mind of many Ugandans, not only the Baganda, but Ugandans. I'll tell you that Buganda is not just a tribe, it's a nation. Not all people that live in Buganda are Baganda, you know, it's a collection of people. And I must salute the Baganda for being the least tribal people, because it is here in Buganda where you're going to find welcoming for everybody. Although this hypocrite keeps wanting to drive the tribal narrative, but he can't succeed because the reality says something different. Mm. Anyway, going back to the Kabaka's uh, speech, I mean, he was clear. He said to, re to, to, to bring back, uh, to restore mm. the kingdom of Uganda, mm. we had to get actively and practi practically involved in the removal in removing the dictator those were his words and i remind you that those words are as alive now as they were some 36 years ago in 1986 to remove the dictator everybody will have to get practically involved because everybody is equally affected you're not going to sit there mm. and think it's a business of only the border border riders mm. a business of only the poor a business of only the uneducated. No, this is a business for everybody. Mm. The pest that has eaten the fabric of our country is called Yoweri Kabuta Museveni. That mm. is the biggest disaster that has befallen us. And until we get rid of the Museveni pandemic, mm. we are still going to be moving in circles. So he was spot on mm. um, and he indeed reminded us that what they agreed about before he was convinced to support the Museveni rebels was the issue of human rights, was the issue of democracy. Unfortunately, all these have been thrown out of the window by the Museveni. Well, people. Honorable, as a final, I, I, I really want to thank you for taking time off your busy schedule because you're actually planning quite a lot of things. But um, I'm extremely very grateful to taking time to give us an ear and uh, share with us your opinions. As we're finalizing, what are your last words to Ugandans? That's you, Cameron, take it away. Well, to the people of Uganda, I'll tell you that it's not over until it's over. We all must get involved in the effort to remove the dictatorship of Museveni. It does not matter whether you are NUP, it does not matter whether you are DP, whether you are FDC, whether you are UPC, or whether you are NRM. Misgovernance affects us equally, and this pandemic should have shown all of us that we are all vulnerable. When money is borrowed and instead of fighting a disease is diverted to, to, to other corrupt uh, ventures, we all suffer the same. We've seen our people die. We will continue to see our people die and we cry, cry, cry until we make an effort to try and get rid of the Museveni dictatorship. The fight is not over. We are continuing and everybody must get involved. Do everything you do. Do all you can and do it with all your might to ensure that we overcome this. Because, man, if we don't, then 
we are sentencing our children and our children's children to this effort again. I congratulate the people of Zambia. They just got and read of an autocratic leader. We too can do the same. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity Please. to wish our brother who is on camera a happy birthday, hey. Elvis Kurovazi. <laughs> this is what they, 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 they you know that. Oh, there so, you go. Happy birthday, my brother. Yeah. Uh, to our brothers uh, who are in jail, those that are incarcerated, I know that some of you may not be able, be able to see us, but we continue to fight. You see now the dictator is shaking. He comes out to deny the things that he's doing. Why? Because that is pressure from the citizens. That is pressure from the international community. He knows that what he's doing is wrong. He sees that uh, Bashir is being taken to the ICC. And Museveni knows that he is next online. So he's trying to clean himself so that he throws this to the candy holes of this world, to others. But we are coming for you, Mr. Teta. And you can run, but you cannot hide. I can guarantee you that one day all this brutality will be paid for. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that is uh, Honorable Robert Chagulanyi Sentamu, and we're coming to the end of this conversation. I really want to thank those who've been online. We didn't have an interview. We always root for a conversation. We've had a conversation once in a while. Those who have actually picked one or two things, you can run with it. I'm Andrew Chamagio, connecting back to studio with my colleague, uh, Romeo Busiku. Uh, if you can hear me, that's all. The NUP president can say right here from Magere. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> Uh, the Luganda version. Yeah, you can start. Elvis, Elvis, you can